Guys, I've got the perfect analogy for what took place on today's session. Here we go. This is the equivalent of showing up to a party, looking around, noticing that you're the only one there. Okay, so you double check your phone, make sure nobody's punking you. Nope. Ah, uh, ah, uh, it hits you. You finally realize that the party is next Friday. What are you doing here? You showed up a full week in advance. Go home. Nothing's going on. Scram. Get lost. That's how the buyers felt at the highs of today's session. And hopefully you were not one of them because you tune into the weekly watch list updates from Sunday where we were not advocating for new money longs up at the highs here. And instead, based on the slowdown in market internals, based on the sectors coming into known areas of resistance, we are watching for consolidation to build out a bull flag in this area and possibly breaking in the future at some point in time. That would be when the party is officially scheduled for. Now, we never put out a video on a Tuesday afternoon. So what's going on here? The answer is is threefold. Number one, this is more of an update. We will not be able to do the pre-market prep for the remainder of the week. It will resume as scheduled for the following week. We're traveling to the West Coast. Number two, because we're not doing the pre-market prep tomorrow, I want you to have some levels as the PPI, producer price index data, comes out at 8.30. Do expect some volatility, but we should prepare you with some levels here in this video. Next up, perhaps the most, imp not important, but interesting, I should definitely say, the Bank of Japan. Just came out literally moments ago, maybe 30 minutes ago or so, and said, hey, inflation, really deflation over there is A-OK. -okay. No big changes need to be made to the yield curve. Everything's fine. So the U.S. markets rallied on that news, noting that, hey, maybe Jerome Powell will be a little bit more dovish in the future. Well, I just don't want you to get caught up in these narratives that really take a firm grasp on the pre-market. But remember, as soon as the market opens at 9.30 tomorrow morning, these narratives, these numbers, so to speak, go out the window. And it's all about what the 11 sectors are doing. The S&P can only do what the 11 sectors are doing, and it can only do it to the degree that the internals allow for. So knowing that, Let's dive into the analysis here and see what's going on for tomorrow's session. So first and foremost, inverted hammer. Yes, it's bearish. Upper wick represents some selling pressure. The red close underneath the open represents some selling pressure. But let's not be overly bearish. I mean, let's think about this as a range. If this is the midpoint, the weekly level that we need to hold at 389.50, I mean, we're still very clearly in the upper 50%. I would even argue that if you divide this into thirds, something that looks like this, upper third, middle third, lower third, we're in the upper 50% of the uppermost third. So is it really that bearish from a location perspective? Absolutely not. We're still hanging out up here towards the highs. We haven't given up or failed any key structure at this point in time. We've also closed yet again over the daily 200 SMA, but noting that we're looking for a pullback here, breaching that into tomorrow's session would not be the end of the world. The rainbows and butterflies pullback area is 393.50 and the line in the sand, as we just pointed out, is 389. 50. Let's have a look at the hourly time frame chart. I want to walk you through the psychology of today's session. So again, here's your buyers showing up to the party early, rejected, go home, nothing to see here. But let's be a little bit more nuanced than that, right? This is a larger red bodied bar than the preceding green bar. Okay, so we know that selling momentum is clearly much stronger than buying momentum. And anybody who is watching the first hour of today's session clearly noticed the increase in tempo when the selling actually hit the tape. All right, so selling momentum's here, great. The next hourly bar is an inverted hammer, once again, indicative of selling pressure, the upper wick representing a failure from the buyers that closes weak on the lows. It's an inside bar. The seller should have no issue cracking the two lows and getting the pullback, right? Well, that wasn't the case. The selling momentum dies right there on the spot, and we go sideways into the close. So buyers are running out of bullets up here at the highs, but the sellers are not aggressing in the downward direction. And noting how we get involved in uptrends, it would be ideal if the market pulled back and gave us a higher low at 393.50. Let's remember that we want to look to buy higher lows in uptrends or equal high breakouts. So knowing those two things, what does the trend count tell us? Here's a low, here's a higher low, here's a high, Here's a higher high. We're in an uptrend. Here's a higher high. Here's another higher high. Don't chase the higher high. Get involved on the higher low pullback. Where would that be? Ideally, it's right here. Open from Friday, pullback low from Thursday, rejection area from Monday. Now that we've recaptured it, it should act as an area of support. That's 393.50. If we go lower than that, this is why this is not the end of the world. If we turn around off of this area, it's still technically producing a higher low. Now, if you're not comfortable trying to buy a pullback when and if we get a hammer candle here, when and if we get a double bottom, when and if we put in an inverted head and shoulders, 
then fine. Look for the equal high break after the higher low, which would be over this area here, just shy of the psychological level around 400. And keep in mind that these three patterns can also happen here for the higher low still at the line in the sand, 389.50. If we go back to the daily time frame chart, let me point out that if we take out the fibs from the low, the beginning of the breakout to the high, where we're currently finding a little bit of rejection, notice the 38.2 is mixed in beautifully here in between the picture perfect pullback and the line in the sand pullback, which is the 50% retracement. That would you know, align nicely with the idea that bull flag consolidation remains in play and looking for bullish outcomes to continue into the future. To be bearish on this setup, if PPI comes out tomorrow morning and completely destroys everything, then it would require a lower high underneath 389.50 to get back into the bear category. On a big gap up tomorrow, once again, very difficult to chase that as a new money long. I would not be buying a higher high if PPI produces some sort of gap up. Let's have a look at our market internals now and see what this is telling us about uh, what unfolded on today's session. Top right hand corner has got you covered with a brief tutorial. Notice that as of last week, everything was bullish. Here, 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 inflows, inflows, inflows. Even Friday was bullish to a less significant degree, which we pointed out in the weekly watch list episode episode from Sunday, look at today's volume inflows. I mean, if this isn't screaming neutrality, then I don't know what is. It's certainly not any big selling pressure. If it was selling pressure, it would build out as a negative uh, sort of look there. It's just clinging to the zero line. So once again, about as neutral as it can get from a volume flow perspective. Same thing holds true with the advanced decline line. Uh, it's tangled right around the zero line. It did not trend throughout the course of the day. It really goes sideways around the zero mark. Even a move that comes from really uh, negative levels, but trends throughout the course of the day higher, that is more powerful. That is more indicative of trend than just just going sideways and being tangled around the zero line. So nothing really great being unveiled from the advanced decline line. It's definitely not bearish. It was above the zero line. And the tick is, again, let's not complicate things here. It's just look at it as a visual. Bullish, 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 eh, less bullish, but still bullish on today's session absolutely flat. It's not bearish, but it's certainly not bullish, right? So this is a neutral data point as well. Another indication of the rally slowing down here at the highs. Another indication as to why we are not overly bullish, looking for continuation just yet, and we want to see the consolidation. This is that Bank of Japan pop that I was just talking about. Looks like most of it has been retraced already. We'll see how that unfolds for tomorrow's session. PPI will probably wipe that away with any volatility that's presented. Next up, we have our market profile. If you don't know what this one is, top right-hand corner's got you covered with a brief tutorial. The big takeaway here is, again, an indication of slowdown. Look at where the value area was. Oops, we want this one. There's the value area, and here's the point of control on today's session. It's completely inside of the Friday range. None of the breakout on today's morning session was sustained. Really low volume there, lack of acceptance. No one wants to commit volume on the breakout, and instead, everybody's comfortable saying, all right, this is where we traded Friday, uh, you know, towards the lows of today's session. It's not overly aggressive. It's not like we tagged all the way down towards the lows in here, but nonetheless, it's definitely not bullish. Another neutral data point for our market at this point in time. Let's go back on over to the platform and take a really, really brief tour through our S&P sectors because remember, as soon as that 9.30 bell rings, the market can only do what these 11 things do. XLK, tech sector, heaviest weighted sector of them all. Continuing in the upward direction, a little bit of an upper wick on today's session, but I would just note we've got yet again a daily close inside of this upper balance. It's not bearish, but again, chasing the higher highs here, probably not advised at this point in time. Ideally, we find a higher low pullback that respects the 50 SMA, the blue line, or this prior area of resistance, which offered support as of last Thursday. Your line in the sand for the picture perfect world is 128.25. We spent some time there because it's the heavyweight sector. XLB is up next if we want to load. Thank you very much, Thinkorswim. Let's spend some time here, but only to discuss the concept of what we're looking at in all of the sectors, right? 100% retracement. Because of that, we are coming into a known area of resistance, it would be reasonable that the market pulls back. If the sectors are pulling back, it would make sense that the SPY itself is going to struggle to get upward continuation. It doesn't mean that we're bearish, it just means that the SPY is not going to continue to produce higher highs. So knowing that concept, ideally the XLB pulls back off of resistance and finds a higher low anywhere over 80.75. XLI, industrials, same idea, 100% retracement. Any consolidation for a higher low is just anywhere over 99. We can't afford to re-break down underneath this level right here, but as we just pointed out, and this will be the concept for almost all of the sectors, in the meantime, it's neutral, maybe a little bit bearish, but the structure does not fail as long as we're above 99. So let's just continue to pick off the levels 
uh, that are important in the sectors, right? XLC, there's your 100% retracement of this overall move. Higher lows want to be anywhere over the 50 SMA, 49, oops, let's circle that, 49.20 in your XLC. XLF, same idea, 100% retracement. Higher lows want to be anywhere over 34.50, which keeps our market neutral to bearish for the consolidation phase, but structurally A-OK. -okay. Notice that the XLV, the second heaviest weighted sector of them all by market cap, is just stuck sideways in a range. It's going to be very difficult for the market to see upward lift if the other sectors are pulling back and this is continuing to go sideways. So no 100% retracement, but as it's not doing anything impressive, of course, your S&P isn't just going to break out out of nowhere. The bullish look here would be over 137.15. We are threatening a flush point at 133.50. Next up is the XLY. Not quite a 100% retracement, but we've already described that we did not put in the ideal lower high, which would have been underneath 135. So this can afford in any sense a higher low pullback that is well above. 135, right? Even if we dip a toe underneath, we would just have to recapture 135 fairly quickly. That would be the look here that preserves more of the neutral to improving look in the XLY. Inverted hammer candle here is perhaps the most clear of all the sectors that would indicate pullback could be around the corner. Next up, let's have a look at the XLU for utilities. D for defensive, we have a sideways range happening here. We're stuck smack in the midpoint of that range once again. This is about as neutral as it gets for the S&P 500, which is a good thing for the defensive sectors to be lagging and not breaking out of the range. Next up is the XLP, same exact concept that we just discussed in the XLU. Here's a range, you could divide this into micro ranges and we're quite literally, if you think about this, as an isolated range, smack in the midpoint again as a defensive sector, seeing this being neutral, that's exactly what you wanna see if you want to continue to look for breakouts and bullish activities in the S&P 500 last, oops, not last, second to last, real estate, much more to do with the wealth effect. The higher this goes, the more confident people will be in their consumer spending, so to speak. They feel as though their home values are, you know, back in par with where they were at the highs, you know, much more to do with the wealth effect. So I wouldn't read into this too, too much, but just from a technical perspective, 100% retracement, consolidation going sideways, it's building out a bull flag already, uh, but some slowdown here, it's fine. It's a lightweight sector for the S&P. It's not going to have a whole lot of pull one way or another. Last but not least now is the XLE for the energy sector, D for defensive. A little bit of lift here, but as we'll see in the ratio grid momentarily, it's not outperforming by any stretch of the imagination, so I'm not concerned with the upward activity in the XLE. Speaking of the ratio grid, let's have a look at that now. So here we are. Uh, if you don't know what this one is, top right-hand corner's got you covered with a brief tutorial on how to set it up. Top four are the risk on sectors. Notice that the XLK is continuing to break out of the inverted head and shoulders pattern. It's not bullish. It's not full-blown risk on yet. It's much more neutral. Tangled up around the daily 50 SMA, the gold line, after an equal low, we would ideally like to see an equal high and a break of that to be more on the risk on side of things. But so far, definitely not a bearish data point for our market. The XLV coming in a little bit is fine, noting that we're inside of that structural balance as well well. XLF possibly offering a higher low above the 50 SMA. XLY tangling up around the 50 SMA. It will become much more constructive for the XLY to find a higher low and then continue because then we would not, you know, we wouldn't say that this is a counter trend move if we find the higher low and break for a trend reversal. As of right now, there still, of course, is the threat that it is just a counter trend move. We rotate back down to the lows and that's the end of the rally. So improvements, but not all the way there yet. Once again, this ties directly into the thesis that things are looking okay. We're not looking for the market to go to hell in a handbasket, but we're also not looking for a big breakout just yet of that weekly resistance trend line. The bottom four are the risk off sectors and notice that these are not screaming. Risk off is in full swing. XLP still underneath that daily 50 SMA. XLE defensive going sideways. XLU in a downtrend and XLRE it's defensive or maybe not defensive, but lightweight. So we're not going to read into it too, too much, but getting a little bit of lift that again has much more to do with your wealth effect. So not seeing anything crazy to be concerned with in the ratio grid. And that's primarily going to do it for today's episode. I want to keep it quite brief. Uh, I suppose we'll, we'll just blast through the remainder of the list. I'll, I'll give you the outcomes here, right? So one of the issues with having really accurate levels in the market is sometimes you quite literally consolidate right to the number. Here we go on an hourly time frame chart. I mean, look at this. I can't make it up, right? You're getting quite literally a wedge right into the number. Uh, 281.25 is the defining level for the QQQ. Now this once again, like the SPY, is indicative of some slowdown. We're not getting continued big green bodied bullish bars in the upward direction, but it's also not bearish. So I would not bet the farm on a short here. I also wouldn't be looking for new money longs. I would watch for a pullback and then either enter somewhere around the 50 SMA, a pullback to this structural area around 275 four or 
equal high break. The concept is the exact same in the QQQ. Something much more interesting is what's going on in the IWM getting a little bit of rejection here up towards the top of the range, which shouldn't come as much of a surprise. We pointed that uh, this out in the pre-market prep this morning, as well as Sunday, right? A little bit of rejection off the top of the range as we come off of this major rally. Of course, it's reasonable to look for a higher low pullback and then possibly break into the future. Once again, indicative of consolidation, not outright collapse. The structure underneath us is still very much so bullish. The levels I would carry forward in the IWM for a pullback would be, let's actually go to the hourly chart and find this together. Uh, the 185.50 is not going to be as important anymore. You probably just want to see the lower edge of the weekly expected move, honestly, which represents the gap close from the Wednesday session of last week, 183.25. 183.25 would be the ideal place for the higher low to form. You know, technically, we could afford something all the way down at 181.10. So here it is on the daily, right? Picture perfect world does this. Still okay world is something that looks like this, respecting the lows of the original balance. Let's blast through the core list of companies. Anything impressive happening here? Apple getting some lift into the overhead range that we know we're trading for. A little bit of an upper wick, though, on today's session. I would, again, monitor this as something to be an intraday scalper of, not necessarily uh, a big holder uh, looking for a ginormous move. Notice the contraction of of today's range, nothing ultimately impressive going on. It will remain bullish over 134.85, falling back down underneath retarget 130 on a fake break. Next up is Netflix. This perhaps looks a little bit more tradable in the downward direction because of the break of the inverted hammer candle low, looking for continued pullback into 311.50. It would be ideal, obviously, if the market as a whole is coming in to support that idea of the pullback uh, in the first place. If we just consolidate, stay high and tight, then of course your next look is for a break of these equal highs over 333. Target is 352.50. Not, not much has changed there. Tesla, finally the untouchable, getting that squeeze we talked about. We actually talked about this in the Discord this morning. Gap and go. Fantastic. It finally played out in the upward direction. You could look for some continuation here, honestly, noting the oversold nature of this overall move here and getting a first break of this balance. Technically, we have doubled it, so that target has been achieved, but the next structure overhead is much closer to 137.25. You could also start to look at this as a daily inverted head and shoulders, as long as we remain over 123.75, no reason to be bearish yet again on Tesla. Instead, what I would say is, is more reasonable is looking for the rally to fizzle out. And if you want to position for a short, position on a short for a big weekly lower high, right? I don't know exactly what level it's going to be at, but something to keep in mind. Next up is Google. Google is still bullish. I love the lower wick that was printed on today's session, continuing to watch the two-day highs for a breakout to rotate back to the balance lows at 94.65. It's bullish as long as it stays above 89.50, looking to initiate the trade on the break of the two-day highs. Anything that comes back down into range, I wouldn't necessarily touch based on the chop. And remember, look above and fail, look below and fail, look above and fail, look below. It was nonsense, nonsense, right? So not interested in here. Continue to be bullish here. Break of the two highs gets you up towards that 90. 94.65, getting underneath 86.50, different story. Maybe we'd consider it. Next up is Metaverse. What's going on with Zuckerberg's fantasy land? Break of the three equal highs, very minor look below and fail on today's session uh, of the Friday range. So remember that the lower wick represents a failure from the sellers to accelerate outside of the prior day's range, close back inside of the Friday's range. Three equal highs, right? It's as simple as that. Over 137.50 is your upward lift here. Now we are sitting at resistance. We are slowing down a little bit. If the market pulls back, your key level to watch is is 128.50, 128.50 on the downside. Next up is uh, Nivda, whoa, NVIDIA. What's going on here? Big outperformance on the day's session, massive break in the upward direction. Again, you probably should not be chasing new higher highs here. I think trying to time a pullback will serve you better from a risk reward perspective. Notice what takes place intraday. It's basically an hour of a straight shot higher, little pullback, and we dribble back up to the highs towards the close. So sellers not aggressing here whatsoever. Obviously, strongest close across the board of our core list here. I, I would, again, I would treat it and respect it as a solid breakout, but you need to be real precise precise with an intraday entry if you're looking to scalp that in the upward direction. Next up is Softy. Uh, I did read some news as I was seeing that Bank of Japan stuff that Softy is going to announce some pretty major layoffs in the coming week, which is, uh, I don't want to call it ironic, but considering that they just announced a big $10 billion investment into ChatGPT's founders, uh, OpenAI, 
I don't know, I might be a little bit upset if I were a Microsoft employee and I you know, was laid off on the heels of that. Regardless, that's not here or there for tomorrow's session. Got the break of the two equal highs, closed at the daily 50 SMA, watching for some upward lift. If the news ultimately does hit and they put some percentage uh, on the number of employees that they're possibly letting go, remember, it's it sucks for employees. Don't get me wrong, I have sympathy for anyone who gets laid off, but for the bottom line of the company, it's an immediate improvement of profitability. The stock should respond favorably in the upward direction. So watching for continued breaks over 239.25. Uh, next target is 247.75. Coming back down into here, wouldn't really want to touch, would want to wait for some sort of higher low confirmation. Look for your hammer candles, you know, all the classic stuff we talk about. Next up, Amazon. What's going on with Amazon? Last but not least, the mini beast, right? Uh, nothing crazy, probably a no touch, probably looking for the pullback, fake break of the top of the range. This is something that we were talking about uh, earlier as well in the pre-market prep today. A little bit sketchy, chasing this on a 100% retracement through the top of the range. Pullback is probably most ideal in Amazon here to find a higher low and then do something like this into the future. Now, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I've got three additional trade ideas to share with you. So if you made it to the end of the video, First and foremost, uh, you know, break out in two shakes of a lamb's tail. If you know where that movie quote comes from, then let me know in the comments section, and that's how I know you make it all. The, that's how I will have known you made it all the way till the end. I'm gonna stop talking and show you the ideas. F S L R is the first one. First solar daily time frame chart. If the market sees a pullback tomorrow, a uh, big higher high was made, closed underneath the opening print of the prior day session, inverted hammer, just watching for a pullback here into this prior level. And if we take a look at the intraday, actually, I suppose it would, you know, let's be a little bit more accurate. Let me take that one off. Apologies, 171.53 under the break of the two equal lows on the daily at 176.81. Uh, so call it about a $5 range in the downward direction here, trying to capture some pullback in FSLR. That would be ideal if the market as a whole is pulling back tomorrow. Next one is going to be JNJ for Johnson and Johnson. Notice that we're getting some consolidation underneath the overhead balance here. So the pressure is in the downward direction. And we've got a bearish engulfer on today's session. Looked above the prior day's high failed up there, closed underneath the prior day's low, looking for continuation in the downward direction. I mean, from a swing trader's perspective, you might start to look, let's grab the other tool and try that one more time. You might start to look for these lows down here and on a measured move perspective, right? That definitely aligns. So 169.30 could be in play. That's underneath with continued acceptance under 172.56. Last but not least, I've got MA for you, MasterCard. Hopefully you're not swiping them up and down, up and down, up and down. But we see two back-to-back -back inverted hammers. We've got a breakdown underneath the lows, clearly, and you would retarget this area here. The delta here is why uh, this stock, of course, catches our eye. It's still one of the higher price stocks out there. So under 373, let's call it 374 even, 368 becomes the target. So a really solid uh, five, six-ish point move available there in MasterCard, which should be quite favorable for the options, right? And if we look at the structure, sort of a descending triangle, flat lows, cracking that area opens the door through the structure to the next area, which is here. And that's what we talked about on the daily. So that's going to wrap up the episode. This is probably coming out as a midnight special. So once again, you can let me know the movie quote, or you can just say midnight special in the comments section down below, and I'll know you made it all the way till the end. And with all of that said, enjoy the rest of your week. Try to do something constructive in the pre-market uh, where you stick to a process, stick to asking those questions. And I have no doubt you can handle it like a pro in my absence. We will resume next week. Uh, as we typically do. So with that said, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Wishing you all a green trading week.